Thank you, Lucy. Before we start, can I just say, if you've come along hoping to hear a talk about BDSM, you're going to be really disappointed. <laughs> Sorry about that. And a little bit of backstory about, um, about the first time I was here. I was in the um, middle of the year in which I turned 50. In fact, I turned 52 days earlier. And I was talking about the 50 challenges that I'd set myself to do in that year. And I'm going to tell you what happened after my last uh, Ignite talk. So let's go. So the last time I was here, up on the screen you can see some of the things that I had already done. And number 18 of my challenges was to be a speaker at Ignite. And that's me, what I looked like when I was here speaking the last time. Um, and two days previously, I'd turned 50. And two days afterwards, I had an enormous 50th birthday party in my house. My friends were, came along and uh, bought me fantastic presents that involved doing some of these uh, activities that you can see on the screen, going over to Ireland to kiss the Blarney Stone. And another of my friends treated me to a trip up Snowdon. I went in the train, I don't, I don't do climbing mountains, but, but somewhere along the line she did manage to persuade me that it would be a good idea to walk down. She didn't tell me that walking down was actually harder than walking up. So halfway down we found a nice cool clean lake and one of my challenges happened to be skinny dipping. So stripped off and uh, had, a, had a little skinny dip, put a man off his sandwiches. Um, <laughs> One of the things I learned from that experience was, was that when you do things like that and colleagues Google you, <laughs> this is what happens. So um, th th take a warning. Okay, so in July, um, I gave blood. It may not be a big thing for you, but anyone who knows me is astounded by that fact because I have previously fainted at the sight of someone else giving blood. So to actually go and give blood myself was a really big challenge. Um, one of the other things that I did was to learn to throw a pot. Oh my goodness, what an amazing experience. I was a bit disappointed because Patrick Swayze didn't show up on my shoulder, but it was an amazing experience, and I still have the pots that I threw. So, um, yes, and in September, I did the Pretty Muddy 5K. That's not a massive challenge for some of you. The funniest thing about it all, you can see there are a pink croc. I had um, broken my toe a few days before, and I was the only person who attempted that race in pink crocs. Um, more activities followed in November when I climbed Penavan. Despite putting out multiple calls for people to join me on this expedition, none of my friends wanted to come, so I went on my own. That picture shows you the point at which I was standing there going, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I'm going back down. And in my head I'm going, don't go back down, you're halfway up. If you go back down, you've done the whole thing, but you're down at the bottom. So it was a real lesson in self-talk. Pole dancing, that also happened in November. Gosh, that is really strenuous activity. For any of you who think it's a, just a delicate activity for ladies, no, it's really hard work, and my thighs ached. Yes. Um, one of the most interesting challenges was to pay for someone's shopping. Um, that's not a big thing, but when you go into a supermarket and stand there looking around, wondering who's shopping you're actually going to pay for, I have to tell you that the stuff that goes on in your head, or the stuff that went on in my head, is just amazing. Does she deserve to have her shopping paid for by me? <laughs> what if she thinks I'm an absolute idiot? Anyway, lots and lots of self-talk on that one. So... It, by December, I realised I had quite a lot of challenges left to fit in in order to get 50 done in the year. And on New Year's Eve, I found myself in a place of, well, that's me and there's my comfort zone, as I went on to do challenge number 49, which was on New Year's Eve of 2016. I went and stood uh, with my kids and a friend at the junction of Churchill Way and Queen Street, giving out free hugs. The target was 50 free hugs to passers-by. We did that in about 20 minutes. So I think we ended up giving out about 250 free hugs. And the most amazing thing about that entire experience was that my 17-year-old daughter and 13-year-old boy got dressed up, came out and held banners and did it with me. Thank you very much. So what did I learn? I've learned a heck of a lot about myself. 
I've learned that I've got more resilience than I thought. I thought I found that divorce does not de define me. Being 50 does not define me. And that I can change my life. My strapline has become this, changing life one adventure at a time. If you want to change something about your life, you need to get out there and do stuff. Or I certainly found that that worked for me. So up on the screen now, you can see a list of the things that I still fancy having a go at. And if any of you have got any contacts and you'd like to help me to do any of these things, actually, this worked last time because I, I got to do off-roading with someone who was in the audience last time. So please come and find me afterwards. And I'd just like to finish off by reading out um, a, a mantra that I've adopted since my, uh, my 50th year. If you want this to be your year, don't sit on the couch and wait for it. Go out, make a change, smile more, be excited, do new things, throw away clutter, unfollow negative people on social media, go to bed early, wake up early, don't gossip, show more gratitude, do things that challenge you, be brave. <laughs>